And we're live. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us today for another episode of the Health Q&A, where we've got uh, Tony Wheel and myself, and we do our best to answer any questions that the community's given us over the past couple of weeks. We missed last week. Um, I had a power outage last week, so I wasn't able to do the live stream. Um, so thank you for being uh, patient with getting this one out. And um, yeah, so thanks for joining me again today, Tony. And uh, um, as always, we, we do a little introduction for yourself. Um, so do you want to take it away? I think I should write my introductions down, but I always forget to do that. <laughs> well, I, I, I do have it in the... Um, yeah, I know. In the show notes. But. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's important for people who haven't been here yet. Um, I am trained by uh, Dr. Morris. He's a naturopath, and he is absolutely amazing and one of the very, very few people that talks about uh, the lymphatic system, the, the, waste, uh, the waste product actually in our body. And how important it is that we um, that we can get our the waste out of our body. Otherwise, we live in a highly acidic body. Um, I can say he trained me, and and my gosh, he does um, he does uh, Q and A's uh, every week with all the uh, with all the questions that come into him. And I I I, I think I probably have one percent of his knowledge because the man is amazing. And um, uh, I always put uh, the link out there. You can find him at, uh, um, what is this link? It's um, Robert Mars and D on uh, YouTube. And you will find hundreds and hundreds of his uh, videos. I have been, his videos are long, one, two hours. But, you know, we're used to that from Charlie, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to know something specific, it's sometimes, you know, you have to listen to all the other the other uh, parts that he discusses. But they're always important and in, in you always learn something. But what I've been doing uh, lately with the help of a, uh, a dear friend in the UK is uh, Glenn is taking uh, the videos apart by topic and put them on my own channel. And that is tonywheel.com slash videos. And it directs you, it goes directly to, um, uh, to the YouTube uh, channel. So where you can find more and you just put in what you're looking for and there you have it. It's all between three and, and nine or 10 minutes. So it's, it's really easy. And there are, oh, I think over 150 uh, videos now there. Mm. And we can still keep adding, but he has little time. So I have to learn to do that myself, unless a volunteer shows up and wants me to help with that. That would be, uh, that would be great. So then please do let me know. So I do my best to answer your questions. I, I feel that I am a forever student, but then again, aren't we all? We, we always keep learning about everything and new things uh, pop up and uh, we have to look into it. So that is um, a little bit, a little bit about me. And yeah. I'm Dutch, so that's why my English is sometimes a little, a little off <laughs> or I forget the words. <laughs> your English is perfect. Um... But it's it is it is you you brought up a good point that we are forever students and we're always learning. So you know that there's there's nothing that's said here or said in any of these shows that's absolutely set in stone 100% of the time. We're doing the best that we can with what we've learned and what we've um, given access to, just as we all are. So it's the 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 main thing that we always want to take away is that we need to be our own experts you need to take your health into your own hands and and experiment and see how your body feels and resonates with different things and um, do what works best for you you know we've for far too long we've been relying on experts and doctors and people in the out there world instead of um you know truly going within and and trusting our body trusting god and trusting our, our own intuition and, and how things um resonate with us so just wanted to share that as well because it's a really important part of these shows as we explore um, health and all the different avenues of it yeah and how beautiful is it that you actually can feel that you are in control over what is happening in your body mm -hmm. i mean how empowering is that it, it's to me it feels amazing 
you know, no doctor needed, no worries. You learn what your pain is about, where does it come from, and not being worried because you know that you are doing the best that, that you can. You put in the right field in your body, and there you go. It's like a car that, that it needs some maintenance now and then, but otherwise it keeps running. Right. Yeah. Okay, we have our first uh, question, which is one that always comes up and where the most mistakes are made, are being made when um, people are not feeling so well um, on mostly fruit, and that is how you mix your greens and your fruits. If you mix it wrong or you mix the wrong fruits together, fruits together, but it's often mixing the fruit with the greens that you get gases and fermentation. So this was a question from Angelica. And um, the question was actually the, the how to mix the greens and the fruit if that also applied to the nut sweet fruits such as avocado and tomato in a lettuce wrap or on top of a green salad. I don't like to call them fruits. They are actually veggie fruits. So, you know, they are in a different uh, section or different, uh, what is it, area of, of what is a fruit. You cannot put them with the acid, subacid or sweet fruits. They are in a, in a part of their own. So no, you don't. You do not um, combine them unless it is an um, it is an, um, a lemon or a lime, and sometimes actually you can you can uh, even add uh, apple, but we don't you know we don't uh, mix avocado or tomato with with an apple. So um, she said intuitively, I feel it's okay, but she would like my input. So be careful with it. If you, if you feel good with it and nothing is happening and you don't feel bloating or rumbling in your stomach or your GI tract and you know, your bowel movements are all, all okay and it happens once in a while, don't worry about it. And um, yeah, you, you can definitely put the avocado and tomato uh, on top of a green salad. Just don't add any, uh, what I see a lot happening, mangoes to it or pineapple or banana. Don't don't mix that. Yeah. What is, what is your experience with that? Well, you know, I, I do notice that if I've done that in the past, it does produce some some gas and bloating. And it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world. You're not going to to necessarily harm yourself doing this unless you do it all the time. But it is something to be mindful of. It can bring on some uncom uncomfortable effects. Um, now, I, I have heard that the 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 thought, and, and I haven't really um, experimented enough to know if, if this is the case, but some people speculate that if you make a smoothie, like if you made a green smoothie with fruit and greens, because the smoothie is like a homogenous mixture, it's going to help with um, not having those layers of digestion that are going to cause that those particular issues. Do you have any thoughts on that, that aspect? I, um, while you were talking, I was reading the next question. So you have to repeat it to me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, it's okay. So, so uh, the thought is that, you know, if we're making like a green smoothie, so we're mixing like apples and uh, spinach, for example, you know, you would normally want to do that in a salad, but say you did it in a smoothie, you're creating a homogenous mixture. Is that going to, do you, do you feel like that would assist with the digestive process? Um, because you're just not layered necessarily. Yeah. Okay. I think that you're in your in your stomach. It will still sort it out. One goes faster than the other. Although apple, I I, I read that you can actually put apple in pretty much everything. Mm, okay. It it responds differently. So if you add an apple to it, yes, it's okay. Um, and and with with uh, with mangoes, because I used to, I love mangoes in in you know a little um, spicy food or a little spicy cold soup, and add a mango to it, delicious. So good. Yeah, so the once in a while, but you know, I get I get gas from it. It happens all the time. So then you know that it was not a good thing to do, and. It is, yeah, there are people that have a lifelong problem with gas and, and, it, and I think and, and eventually it's gonna damage your body because it's not good. You know, you get that, that ongoing fermentation. 
And um, that's not what you want in your body. You can even turn into alcohol. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder, I haven't looked into that, if that, if that is also related to having a, an, a fatty liver, non-alcoholic fatty liver that so mm. many people seem to have nowadays. Interesting. Yeah, it could be. So yeah, in summary, you know, it's best to to not mix your foods. And this goes back to the simplicity of everything. If we if we eat mono meals, it's really that ideal best scenario because you're not complicating things with your body. You're um, providing just one source of information for it to have to process, and and then you don't have to worry about these these food combinations and things of that nature. Um, but if you do, you want to make sure you always eat your fruits first. And give some time for those to digest, like 30 minutes, an hour or so before you start eating your um, your veggies and your leafy greens and things of that nature. And isn't that amazing that we grew up and always had desserts after dinner and not yep. before? Right. And if it was before, you were spoiling your appetites. <laughs> right. <laughs> always backwards. Oh, yeah. How many things did I hear? How many? How often did I hear that? I think all the time. And, and, and maybe as children, you know what is good. So you wanted to have the fruits uh, first, yeah. okay. the dessert first. You know what is good. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> yeah. Um, a question a question from Sandy, and I already spoke with Sam, Sandy, but I think she brought up an important question and an issue that she has is that his mucus is coming up um with eating uh eating fruits and that is exactly what happens is fruit bring brings out the weaknesses in your body and it starts cleaning so whatever needs to come out comes out um, if your kidneys are not filtering adequately and i think we should not just say oh your kidneys are not filtering because of course they always filter it is filtering enough. If enough, if your 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 kidneys are clogged up, and of course they filter somewhat, but not uh, not enough to get um, to get the acidity out of your body. So yes, you will get a lot of mucus out, and any which way it can come out, and you will see that happen too, when actually when you eat the wrong foods. Because I spoke with someone who ate something that did not sit so well with her and she even got um, eczema on her eyes. And those are the things that happen. Um, it, it sounds maybe weird. You eat the right food and the mucus comes out and then you eat the wrong food and the mu mucus still comes out. But whatever comes out, you know, it, it's, it's needed. Unless you, you eat the completely wrong food. I did that once. I could not resist spicy Oh, what was it? So-called healthy, um, um, uh, what is it? Ships. And they are from Sita and uh, made in, in avocado oil. Very, very spicy. Mm. And it is, oh my gosh, I had so much mucus coming out. And that was caused by the, by the chips that they just caused the mucus. So you already knew that was the wrong food for me. Now chips are the wrong food anyway, but that was particularly wrong. Yeah, if you're going to indulge in some chips, it's best to make them yourself, you know, to actually get the potatoes and um, make the chips and try not using oil. But as soon as we buy store-bought chips and you've got all those concentrated oils within it, it, it can really disrupt the body, especially if you've... Um, been well, how, do you know how you can make really good and actually still healthy chips is slice a sweet potato very very thin mm -hmm. and um you can brush them with a little um, um what is it coconut aminos mm -hmm. now i'm not going to say uh, use coconut aminos in everything it's whatever with all all these things it's you know once in a while and, uh, and then put them in a dehydrator, or even if you can, put them out in the full sun if it's not mm. too humid outside. Let them dry, and you have your delicious chips. Yum. That does sound good. I've done it. It is it is good. Yeah. Um, the next question came from Yola. Um. Oh, it is about a dentist and it is about um, the food body connection. She was actually asking for a good dentist in the area because she lives in the, in the same area as I do. And that's her young boys 
already had tooth decay at a young age. That is amazing to me. And, and I think that still has to do with the, uh, with the limb system from the mother that we all get our, as children. That's when I was sick, you know, actually from birth and had all kinds of problems. And I think that is the same with teeth and it has also to do with the calcium absorption. But um, Yola, I will look for a, uh, a dentist here because um, I know that someone who worked at Dr. Morris's office had um, pointed one out to me as being the best because there are several holistic dentists nowadays. And she said there was only one that she trusted. So I have to look that one up. <laughs> so I will answer you in emails as soon as I can. Holistic dentist. Um, oh, yeah. The next question was from Carly. When is the best time to consume baking soda and water? Would it be on an empty stomach um, or prior to eating? Well, I think that empty stomach is usually what you have prior to eating. Um, but I know a lot of people do it nowadays, um, baking soda. And um, all I can say, don't. If you have a, a problem with your stomach or intestinal tract and you need some baking soda to clean it out, it is okay. But um, it is not good for the long term. Term It actually messes up the balance in your body. You don't need to, to, to add anything like, like the baking soda because it is alkaline to, to create al alkalinity in your body. It doesn't work that way. So the important thing is like get on mostly fruit in whatever issue, because you didn't tell me what issue it is. Um, whatever issue you have will be solved. And um, so that is my take on, uh, and actually Dr. Morris's, because when she sent me that uh, question, I, I did look it up and he did mention uh, it messes up the balance in your body. So I go with that. I am, yeah. uh, I'm not doing it. Um, you can, and a lot of people do that and there's nothing wrong with that for the alkalinity in your mouth. And that is actually to, uh, to rinse your mouth with it. You know, yeah. that is, you know, especially when you're eating a lot of fruit and you're new to it. Because when yeah. you, when you are on, on a fruit for a long time, your, your teeth don't even get, you know, get dirty anymore. They stay clean. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I still use baking soda for my teeth, um, but if I miss a night of brushing, it, it's not really that big of a deal. Just because when you when you are on mostly fruit, it um, your teeth stay pretty clean. Um, but as far as ingesting it, um, yeah, I'd, I'd I'd echo that I wouldn't make that a regular practice because you can the body will get used to it and it can start to disrupt things um, to where things won't digest properly. Um, in your stomach. Now I've used it before um, if I if I drink too much and, and I don't hear other people having the same issue, but if I drink too much um, citrus juice or lemon or lime juice, especially um, I can get heartburn and that's a, that's a quick remedy that will, um, you know, I, I burp a lot after I do it because it causes that reaction, but it will, um, will, cause the heartburn to go away and the acidity to go down immediately so that's a that's an easy um, quick fix for that kind of thing but again I wouldn't do that as a regular part of my regiment for sure there is something that I was aware of when I was even in my early 20s a long long time ago um, and that is actually the juice of a potato hmm. now we're not pro white potatoes at all but if you would have heartburn really bad and you need a quick solution, then the juice of a potato, you can actually, um, you grind them up and then just press the juice out of it. And it's only, you know, like a teaspoon. It's all you need. And that will take care of the, uh, um, of the heartburn too. But of course we go with doing exactly what is good for our body and, and, and not eat anything that even caused the heartburn. But sometimes our bodies are already in, in so much distress and in, in so acidic 
yeah, you have to go through these little, um, well, call it treatment uh, options and then heal the body in the meantime. But it's not something like, oh, I'm going to do this every day and then I can eat, keep eating pizzas or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yep. Doesn't, doesn't work that way. But I think, you know, we, all the people here on the call, they, they're all smarter than that. They know that it's not going to work. Yeah, there's no quick fix. This is No, <laughs> I, I was, I have a client, he's, he's been a client for a long time and he keeps having problems. And um, I, I managed to, uh, to, or I managed, I, I told her, don't we all wish there was just a magic pill? Because mm-hmm. I know I would take it. <laughs> <laughs> and I would. I mean, it is, um, we can all act like it is so easy to do and you just detox and then you're fine. And it's like, if you have been sick and, and to the degree that some of us are and the problems that we have, and it, it goes from, um, well, next topic is migraines. So I was thinking about migraines and, and thank goodness I never had those. But it, it, there are so many things, you know, the arthritis, the diabetes, the heart problems, cancer, you know, anything, anything that causes pain. It's a, it's a struggle. It's not, an, it's not easy. And, and changing your diet when, when you have to cook for, for people around you who think that you are a total nutcase mm-hmm. and, and that you have absolutely have a, uh, a problem with food then uh, it's like they don't realize they are the ones that have a problem with food. Right. You just try to heal your body and listen to the body. And, um, and then there are a lot of people that are on a ton of uh, pharmaceuticals and try to, uh, to tie her off, which is also not easy because they have so many side effects. This is an, um, an email from uh, Clive and um, he, um, he was making sure that I got his, uh, his message. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he also says that he loved Dr. Morse's videos and he is the only doctor uh, I trust. And he writes, I've been doing the frugal for maybe three months and doing great. I've started my partner on it and she was a big migraine sufferer. So the migraines have now stopped and she stopped the evil toxic medications, but she has experienced real weight gain from the medication and she's now doing the fruit and juice, but is still gaining weight. Uh, I get why all her systems are not working correctly. Her urine is now alkaline. And um, he asked about some of Dr. Morse's products and any recommendations. I will definitely get in touch with you personally, Clive, and, uh, and send you some more information. Um, yeah, the, the, um, the chemicals from the, uh, the pharmaceuticals are still in your body and still wreaking havoc. And yeah, all you can do at this point is um, stay, definitely stay with the fruits and the juices. And, um, and we can check if, the, if your thyroid, if her thyroid is working correctly, what other problems are there. But what it actually is, what you have to ask yourself, why were there migraines in the first place? Mm. So it's not like, okay, there are migraines, so we have to fix that. No, you have to fix the reason why you had migraines. And that is with everything. Even if you, if you had like cancer in the past and you overcame it, you still have to look why did you have migraines and even today then address that. So it's, um, it's the fruit and the juices that will help and, uh, and, and until the chemicals get out of the, out of the body. It's, um, you know, all her systems, all her glands are not working correctly yet. But you, um, you already both are, are well on your way and, and doing amazing. Um, about urine being alkaline, well, that is the thing. Urine needs to be slightly acidic. And uh, because it is a waste product and the waste needs to come out. If it's alkaline, it's not coming out. So you may do the pee in a jar thing in a glass jar, have it sit for six hours, up to six hours and see if you have any sediment in it. And if there is, that means that you can start moving the lymph. And once you can do that, you start feeling a lot better. And with moving the lymph, we keep coming back to what you said, Justin, and what made me think, oh, you're gonna bounce on the bed when you started out, but it was little little bouncing in the grass. Mm. <laughs> I will never forget that. I thought it was so funny. 
not the not the bouncing in the grass, but the first thing when you started talking about it, I saw myself bouncing on the bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just an easy way to get some movement in and get them, get some things moving, and the grass provides a nice nice cushion. So just to reiterate for anyone. Uh, a lot of people advocate for rebounding to get the lymph moving and to get uh it's just a great great exercise and so they'll they'll show those little mini trampolines that you can get but if you don't want to get one and you just want to try rebounding just go out onto some soft grass and just do little bounces and you don't even have to really leave the ground but just kind of like get up on your toes and and up and down that way and that way you're not putting any strain or not much strain on your knees and joints but you're still getting that rebounding kind of action in there um, and you're not having to spend any money. So it's just an easy way to, and you're, you're grounding, you're, you're grounding at the same time. You're getting that bare contact with the earth. So many benefits and, uh, and it's just fun to do. So I highly recommend doing that. And you know what? You can still bounce on your bed. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Not where I am because I have a fan right over my head. It's not happening there. but (laughs) Yeah. Why is it that as children, we always wanted to bounce on the bed and we were never allowed? Because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know what was good for us then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, from Stephanie, um, change to a frugivore diet, 23 days into the juice feast. Amazing. You're doing great. I'm loving this way of eating and I feel great. I was hoping you might give me some insight as to diminishing menopause symptoms with this way of eating. Well, Stephanie, you don't tell me if you already have uh, menopause symptoms, but you know what? They will be much, much less with this way of eating because this is the best that you can do for your body. And um, I was one of the lucky ones. I never, I never had any symptoms. I totally forgot about that you were supposed to have symptoms. So I didn't even know, ignored them. I don't know if I ignored them. I just didn't have them. So don't be afraid of it. If you have uh, some, it may happen, um, but it's, it's, it will go away. It will, it will be so much less if you are on on this um i hate to wait to 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 say that it is a diet it's not a diet it's a lifestyle that's how we're supposed to be yeah it is um because diet is something that you i don't know like it's forced upon you you have to do that uh, but it we have to look at it it's not just to become healthy it's just to become I don't know, way more. It, it is healthy in so many ways. Um, it's like how I felt mentally. I was actually depressed before I started it. I was easily in tears. Mm. And it's like being on this lifestyle way of eating. It's like everything starts falling into place. There, there is a balance that, that happens. The, the people that you attract then once you feel that this is the way to go. If you have any doubts, it will be much, much tougher mm-hmm. to, um, to get through uh, yeah, the, the, first time, the first part of it. And I do hear people about doing um, deep, deep cleanses and feel, um, feel horrible. I think I'm a little, uh, I'm not that brave, to, mm-hmm. to be honest. I've had a lot of pain in my life, a lot, and I can handle a lot, but I'm not seeking it. That's uh, absolutely not. So I took it slow, and yeah, my I do uh, introduce uh, sometimes um, not really that uh, consciously avocados and stuff in my uh, my diet, and that's you know that slows it down. And then the next day I start again. That's just the way to do it. But this was a question, Justin, that you probably know more about it than I do, mm. and that was about um, uh, from Josh Joshua, who is asking uh, regarding semen retention. Being on a raw alkaline vegan diet, my sex drive has been on another level. It's interesting. Some people say they have low sex drive. Others say they say they have another. Um, sex higher, uh, more sex drive. So with the way that he explains it here, it's probably higher instead of lower. Semen retention is difficult sometimes, but I know how important it is to refrain from releasing. 
You build a healthy mind and soul when you don't senselessly ejaculate. My mm-hmm. question is, if you do, if you do release, can ingesting your own fluid be beneficial? Will you still reap the benefits of semen retention if it's recycled through the body, similar to urine therapy? Um, I, I will. I have a few things to say about that because I think that um, when we when we go back to what Charlie explained to us about semen retention, like no, you cannot compare it to ingesting it. So that is that's definitely not the same. Um, I can absolutely not explain it the way Charlie does because he's the master at this. Um, I'm also not a fan of of, uh, urine therapy because I see it as waste. And um, if it was meant to to be recycled, we would have an already recycled system. But I accept um, people who say it's, um, they're happy with it. It's just something, especially not when your body is highly acidic, be careful with it. Um, but if you, so ingesting it, um, no, I don't see why, why that would be beneficial. So you can tell, you can probably um, tell him more uh, about the importance of the, uh, from releasing it. Yeah. Well, when we, I mean, my, my understanding from what Charlie's talked about and kind of how I visualize it is when we truly master the semen retention it's like almost like a, a, a train track transition. You know, you, you're, you're shifting the course from one direction to another where, or as we've been programmed through the porn industry and the, 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 the way that we've been mistaught about sex in general is that you ejaculate outwards. And so we've only been taught this one particular way, um, the wrong way. And, but the right way is when you, when you do clamp down and you do have those muscles trained and you you practiced in this manner to where you you shift the train tracks and it actually goes up the spine um and the better you get at it the farther up the spine it goes and this is sort of uh, similar to the kundalini rising and that you're transmitting that energy all the way up and um i i have not had a lot of experience with this because ever since i've started learning about it i've, I've chosen to, to kind of just be celibate i've had the opposite um effect as far as sex drive goes and i i'm just waiting more so just kind of figuring things out like i, I want to know all there is before i even start exploring with the sexuality um aspect to it um but that's my understanding is is it is it travels up the spine and it, and it becomes this euphoric experience and if you can get it to go all the way up then that's when you um yeah it's like next level um yeah kind of activation but that's about as far as i know um and then as far as ingesting it i I don't see any real benefit to that i mean i'm potentially there could be something but um i don't think it it applies in the same sort of way and if you listen to santos talk about um semen retention um, it's he's he stresses on it very very highly um, to not ejaculate outwards like it's a really big deal and if we were taught correctly about this this is like the ultimate um, ultimate thing to avoid so I uh, Josiah I would highly recommend you you find any way possible to not ejaculate outwards whether that's abstaining from it entirely or um, uh, yeah, just practicing more so to where you're really erring on the side of caution with that, because it's every time we do that, we're draining our life force. We're 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 leaking out the essence. That's that's Jesus Christ within us. You know, this this is that chrism oil um, that that we're releasing, and and every time we do that, it's just a little bit more of our essence that's draining away and that's why men especially feel so drained after ejaculating outwards because your some of your life essence has been drained out out of you so that's kind of my take on that um i'm sure charlie would have a lot more to say on the manner um so maybe if you if you want to get on a uh, q a with me and charlie and colleen that might be a good question to ask there um but that's about all i got on that one it actually makes so much sense too, because now as a woman, you have to have protection. Um, there are a lot of unwanted children. 
And I think it's only natural and it only makes sense that you ejaculate outwards when you do want to have children and not any other time. That, it makes so much sense to me. Yeah, well, I mean, according to Charlie, you don't even do it when you're wanting to have children. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's more reliant, reliance on the immaculate conception that um, God will provide whenever we're supposed to have children. I, again, I don't know. Um, that is uh, beautiful, actually. But that's that's what that's what he has said yeah. on the matter. Is it's it's all like we we never ejaculate outward, and we just have full faith that God will provide children when when we are ready for it, but not. Yeah. Not so, care. so actually, we don't decide. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I had I had not thought of that part. It was like that is amazing. That yeah. is so nice. It is. It's beautiful to really consider, and if we can imagine, you know, because it. I, we're, we're all having children too early anyway. So if we can get to this state where we're living longer and living healthier and getting in relationships later and having children later, then it will become a lot more of this not deciding things and not trying to plan and plot things, but it's really just leaving it up to God to decide. And it will happen a lot more just in, in that divine timing as it needs to. Yeah, and I think we do have to be healthy too. And I yes, think that is absolutely. extremely important because what I also hear from Dr. Morris over and over is that uh, the next generation is even unhealthier than you know this generation and the previous one and getting yeah. unhealthier all the time. We see 20 year olds with, you know, with problems that have not happened even to an 80 year old. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, horrible it is and you know fortunately i think this is the worst that it's ever going to get <laughs> hopefully we're still we're turning the ship and this is this is as bad as it's going to get but i do agree if we were heading down that trajectory it was just going to get worse and worse and worse yeah because when you look into um into the the grocery stores and you see that 99.9 percent .9 there is actually not even food but sold as food and everybody eats it. When, when there is a shortage of food here in Florida with the hurricanes and if it's coming and then the first food that you see disappear, I'll let you guess what it is. What do you think is the first food that is sold out? Probably the meat. Actually, no, it is the chips. The chips, wow. Well. <laughs> the chips, the bread, and some canned food. Mm -hmm. Not even necessarily the meat, um, because if you don't have any power, uh, you don't have a fridge. So people are smart enough then to not buy the meat. Mm. But it is the bread, uh, some of the canned food and uh, the chips and um, um, all these fancy, um, not even water, but all these fancy drinks with, with ugh, um, junk in it, only so, junk in so it. Stuff, yeah. Yeah, so does that's the word. I was always I, I wonder around these tours, and it's like it's amazing. Mm. It, it really it puzzles me. But there's a lot of work to do to get people to realize that all that stuff they put into their bodies that they are addicted, and um, yeah, sad. I, um, I've been talking with, uh, with more and more people about, you know, um, there, was a, there was a saying that maybe we don't need, you know, all these trainings for what is healthy and all these calls because we will be healthier soon. Everything will be healthier. And it's like, yeah, but all these people that are still buying the junk food and they're going to figure out that it's all fake and it's not food and the doctors, you better stay away if you want to stay alive, then um, um, they will need us. They will need our information and how they can change. Mm. So that is actually my, my idea to be able to, to actually help Dr. Morris with his training to so many more people are going to be aware of it and um changing the world right yeah it's a lot of we got a lot of work <laughs> one one q and a at the time <laughs> yeah <laughs> um this is from chris 
And um, he, he tells me he is, oh, he says much love and appreciation to us. Mm. And um, he is 60 and always had such weak finger and toenails. Is this simple the result of acidosis at one level or another? And is it possible for it to ever change? It can change so easily. And yes, it is acidosis. And your, um, you lack calcium in your, uh, in your nails. And that is because of acidosis. It's being pulled out. Uh, it's like, um, yeah. I say it very simplistic as in, as in a repair uh, mechanism, you know, the calcium taking out of your bones to go to another area and, and work there. But, um, and how do you put calcium in? Well, you definitely do not, what I did, uh, taking calcium pills because I got to a point that I broke a femur by just twisting my leg and it broke in midair. That's not something that you want to happen to you. So if your fingernails are weak, then maybe your teeth and maybe your bones are getting weaker too. And especially, um, you know, when you are in your 60s. Um, I say it's easy to change. Yes, it is. You just go on a more alkaline diet, get the acidity out of your body and um, um, work on the parathyroids. And I, I will send you some more uh, information, Chris, um, how that is done. Um, yeah, working on a parathyroid, we, we have, um, there are herbs for everything. And I do have to say, if you are, and that is an issue that keeps coming up with, with most of us, you know, we don't eat any meat anymore. So using um, glandulars, which is from a bovine, um, to help kickstart um, a gland in our body is what a lot of people are very much against. And I know Colleen is, and sometimes it is like, do you want to, um, well, fight with your health for many more years to come or do you want to kickstart it and and see you only use it for about a month now i've been going back and forth with this like should i do that should i even advise it should we talk about it my first um um advice is always the herbs Definitely not start with the glandulars, always start diet, of course, diet is always number one, and then, then the herbs. But then you get to a point, and that is happening, that my kidneys that have been bad for 50 years, they are not, uh, not filtering, not even adequately, barely, and I'm always in pain. And um, despite being on all fruits, it's just not working. So I have the choice to live with this and go another few years like this in the hope that at some point it will kick in and the fruit will help me, is helping. Um, or if I am going to use for a month a, a uh, glandular, which is from an animal and it is bovine. Now, the thing is that, that um, yeah, you can say it is an, a negative frequency, so it's never good. On the other hand, this animal is, um, yeah, they, they call that uh, humanely killed. There's no such thing. Mm -hmm. uh, having an animal killed for whatever reason, um, you know, unless it is very sick, but then still it can die on its own. Um, it's, still, uh, it's still a difficult uh, decision. Um, an animal, these animals will not be killed to use their glandulars. They are being killed for consumption. And yes, and then the glandulars are taken from it to be used. So it is, um, some people don't mind, other people are very much against it. So I'm always clear that when you want, when you, with the thyroid, there, there is no herb specific that helps the thyroid um, to, to work better. So you can do it by just going into, uh, into all uh, fruits and for however much long it takes and see uh, that it's getting better. I think you can. Uh, I think, no, I know you can get better. I have been getting better um, 
even with my kidneys not filtering. And so as much as we keep saying, well, you need to filter the kidneys, get the acidity out, get the waste out, get your lymph moving. And then, you know, the magic starts happening. But for me, the magic did also happen, even with kidneys not filtering, as long as you put in the right fuel. And I hope that uh, Chris, that answered your, uh, your question. And Justin, if you want to add anything about the part of using a glandular, then uh, yeah, please, please let me know your view on it. Well, I mean, I don't have any particular thoughts other than I wouldn't advocate using any sort of animal product to, because even if it, I don't know, may, maybe it'll work, but at what, at what cost, you know, we're, we're adding suffering to our energetic being you know we're 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 contributing to you know maybe maybe it wouldn't have been harvested or maybe it would have just gone to waste otherwise but ultimately you're still putting some death inside you in order to receive life um out of it which i just don't i don't particularly agree with and don't feel like that's the best way to go about it um but i would say that you know getting on the fruit and trusting that it's all going to work out is, is the best way. And if you want to accelerate that process, then cycle in some juice feasting um, little stents, you know, or, or longer one to accelerate it, or you can even incorporate some dry fasting as well. Um, dry fasting is a great way to sort of accelerate detox and um, get things, get things moving, which is, it, almost counterintuitive you you would think that dry fasting would would slow things down because you're not um consuming things to push things through but when we dry fast and and when i say dry fast you you can even do this with just like 12 hours a day so you just commit to 12 hours where i'm not going to eat or drink anything which most of the time eight hours were spent sleeping so you're just attacking on a little bit of time extra there but if you can do that as a regular part of your regiment you're giving your body uh, that full time to get to focus on whatever it needs to and our body is a very very intelligent um, entity and when we get out of its way and stop consuming things um, even even liquids even water um, it gives that full full time to focus on what it needs to so that would be a great way to sort of accelerate that that healing process um, and then you can look you can even look into extending those dry fasts to to 14 16 18 hours a day if you if you want to or even look at um you know longer periods but you just have you just want to take it very slow with dry fasting you don't want to jump into a longer one too quickly just listen to your body um but i think dry fasting is a, is a wonderful way to sort of activate um a lot of things and expedite healing so cycling and, and then juice feasting as i mentioned is another great way to um, flush the body with with nutrients it's, you don't have to interrupt your life in any way um, because you're still providing adequate uh, energy levels from the juice and you can give your digestive system a, a rest to sort of help accelerate any detox as well so those would be my recommendations for that this is so funny. You say do, an, uh, do like 12 hour dry fasting a day. That sounds way more difficult than saying do 12 hours dry fasting at night. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> so yeah, do 12 <laughs> hours dry fasting at night, you know. Because <laughs> I hear people say, I cannot do that. I say, you're already doing it. <laughs> yeah. Just commit to 8, 8, 8 p.m. I'm not going to drink or eat anything else and not until 8 a.m. the next morning. And it's really quite simple. Um, There's also another way to help uh, the kidneys. It's always the kidneys. Is... Um, um, castor oil packs on mm. the kidney and actually the castor oil packs that work whenever you have pain somewhere it's doing its magic I don't know what it is with this stuff but it seems to always do its magic mm. have you ever tried that castor oil I haven't I've never no. tried it it's um, but, I, but I've heard I've heard many many miracle testimonies about it for yeah. a wide range of uses so it is, it's a little messy, so. Yeah. Yeah. 
and doing it on your kidneys and you know you have to put it on your back mm. it's um it's not easy there is something that um, came up in a uh, conversation i had this morning and that was about vegan and that um she had been told and i told her i would talk about it uh, on the show mm. she had been told that actually vegan was invented by the cabal and um, I have been thinking about that, why, why all of a sudden that whole vegan concept was so pushed in any which way. Mm-hmm. And to me, it was actually already clear. It's like you, t- you tell people that not to eat meat. Maybe it's getting too expensive and it's, more, it's cheaper actually to, um, to fabricate uh, some, some fake meat in a lab. Mm-hmm. instead of having all these animals so yeah it, it helps the animals and but on and then they they make all this um all these products you go to a health food store any health food store i mean it's all processed food it's all vegan and it's all processed and um i was at a, at a restaurant um not too long ago, and I asked if they did have any meat, any vegan uh, uh, menu or dish. Oh, yeah, yeah, we do. We have a Beyond Burger. You know? mm-hmm. like, no, thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's very much, um, I, I don't doubt it at all that the whole concept and term was cabal invented, and you just, you don't have to wa- look any further than just watch the movie Soiling Green and see how they'd want to shift us into this prepackaged processed food that then they could introduce all sorts of horrible things into the food without us even knowing and they probably already have but it is just an easier and cheaper way to feed the slave population without having to worry about animals and um, meat and things of that nature so if they could shift us towards this artificial um way to where they're providing everything and there's even less contact with the earth around us and and then everything and then we just have because it's all about disconnecting us from everything so if they can disconnect us from any any knowledge of where our food comes from that's even better so it was it, it wasn't designed to shift us back towards eating plants and uh you know being frugivores which we are that's why they didn't use that term which was already uh already already in existence they they made up this vegan term um to uh sort of shift into the artificial route and um yeah like i said create the the slave slave food pop slave food um that would just be easier to manufacture and cheaper to push and of course it is addictive again mm-hmm and um, it's not that they now, uh, all, they, before they had the whole meat eating population and now they have the nut meat eating population. So they think, I think we are smart enough to know it's just another trick and that we have to stay away from the whole vegan aspect. Because what you, what you also get, it's like, oh, I, you know, I know people that eat a lot of fruit or they are vegan. It's mostly that they say they are vegan and they don't look healthy. And it's like, no, of course not, because they eat junk. If vegan doesn't mean that you eat healthier, it, it's, it's, you can still eat junk. And even with plant-based, you still eat a whole bunch of cooked, uh, cooked meals and processed foods. It makes no difference. If we say it's vegan or plant-based, it, it's all the same thing. And, um, but yeah, I, I already came up with a slogan for the t-shirt. So I'm going to work on that one. And that is fruit related. <laughs> Cause some, somebody called me, I don't know if I mentioned that before. I was called a fruit tart. <laughs> I thought that was a nice one. <laughs> a crazy fruit tart. So I'm going to do something with that. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got to promote it one way or the other, isn't it? Right. It's like when you are at a cash register and I buy, you know, once a week for two people and I don't even want to look at the cost because they, they tripled in the last, um, well, last few months to, to a year. Um, but <laughs> we probably buy all the oranges they have and, and all the, uh, the lemons and apples. <laughs> it, looks, it looks crazy. And then they look at us as like, 
what are you going to do with this? And it's like, well, this is my, my uh, weekly, uh, you know, food that I eat. And it's like, how do you do that? <laughs> I look at like, you know, 100 pounds of apples. <laughs> I'd use them. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's always funny. But it makes people think, you know, it's uh, maybe they start looking up, you know, about eating fruit. Right. Well, that was actually the last question I had about uh, the, the nails. Okay. Yeah, uh, I had one question from the chat from Engage Reiki, and she said, uh, or he said, um, forgive me, uh, that... What was the question? I'm on day 25 of my juice fast, perplexed that I lost no weight during week three. In fact, gained a power. I'm not sure how that's possible. Any thoughts? And I asked, do you feel your body is at a balanced weight? Um, eventually it will stabilize. And she said, no, I have a good big extra to drop during this fast. And so my thoughts are, um, you know, the body can react in different ways when we go through this detox. So you just kind of have to trust that the the juice and the um, the fruit is, is going to get you where you need to go. But I, I wouldn't go into this for the purpose of weight loss. That's it's going to happen naturally. You know, we, we need to go into this with this idea of all all around healing, you know, all around healing. Um, um, the, and, and I promise you the weight will be the last thing that you worry about because it, it will just come off um, especially if you go on a long juice fast it will it will definitely come off so it's probably just a, a lull in whatever's happening your body's detoxing in some particular way and that's causing a pause in that that direction but that's that's my thought on that yeah when I was um, I have always tried to work on my weight because I was always overweight always yo-yoing losing weight gaining back more and it was a constant struggle and then I just gave it up. I was like, okay, I am what I am. This is it. All I can do is eat healthy. And, uh, and then I got into uh, the all fruit and it was disappearing and it's disappearing so fast. I didn't even, at first, I didn't give it a second thought. I was just, you know, I didn't weigh myself. I didn't even want to see what I was weighing, what my weight was. And, but my, my clothes, you know, was dropping two sizes. It's like, oh my gosh, now I want to see it. And, um, but on the other hand, when I go back to eating more fat, I gain it back. So it is, um, it shows me that, you know, being on fruit is just a way to eat. Mm. And, and yeah, I know it's for a lot of people, it's very difficult to stay on hundred percent fruit, especially when it's cold. And that is something that I hear a lot. It is so cold. I need to have something warm. Well, are you aware that you can actually, whatever you have in the salads, Put it in a blender, add a little, uh, add a little water, and let it blend until it gets warm. And there you have your warm meal. And or do what we did in in Holland and uh, or the Netherlands, and what they do in the UK: drink some hot herbal tea, and that helps you. It's it's the idea of warming up on the inside that we don't want cold food. But we, we, you know, we're not in a, in a cold environment when we eat, you know, we're in a warm house. And it, it, sometimes I wonder, is that something that is in our mind, the idea it's cold, we need to eat hot? Could that be that it's just in our minds? Mm. I mean, I definitely don't like feeling cold. Um, I don't know. It could, could very well be that. Um, yeah, I don't know. But a, another suggestion would be uh, to warm the food on the stovetop. You don't cook it, but um, say you make like a, you blend up a bunch of tomatoes um, to make like a tomato soup and you can throw some some basil in there, um, a little salt and pepper, uh, or, or, you know, you don't even really need the salt, throw some celery in there. Um, but if you put that on this, and I might have just been saying some bad food combination, so forgive me for that. But if you throw that on the, the, the stovetop, and if you just use your finger to stir it, that way you never let it get too hot. As long as, your, fin yeah. as, long as your finger can stir it, then it's never getting too hot to denature it. Um, and so just keep it at that temperature, but you can warm it up to where it's, you know, just hot enough to where you're like, okay, this is hot on my finger, then take it off the stove and then it's nice and warm. 
um, but you haven't denatured it. And that's a, that's a great way to where you don't have to have a thermometer in it or anything of that nature, you know, because they say like 115 degrees Fahrenheit is, is what you want to stay below. Yeah. Um, but the, the finger trick is a great way to just do that without having to worry about it. I never thought about that. That's actually a very good idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Well, I see that we already uh, filled up an hour. Yeah, we did. Yeah, it was another great one. Awesome. Well, thanks, Tony. Appreciate you and appreciate all you do to share and uh, appreciate everyone for being here today. And um, yeah, we'll keep doing these because there's always more to talk about. There's always more to get into as far as health goes. And I'm honored that, um, yeah, I get to hold the space to, to do this so, so that we can, you know, bring health to more people. And, and for those of y'all listening in, you know, make sure to, um, to spread, spread this knowledge around as, as I'm sure you are, but, um, you know, don't push it on people who aren't ready, but anyone who is ready to find some health, like help them out, help them out. And, uh, we can lead everyone back to this space where we all need to get to, which is, um, yeah with the fruit with the fruit going back to the mother so yeah and if if people want to take it to a deeper level you can always connect with me and um and we set up a time to uh to chat and go over things yeah my yeah. email uh, is in the show notes i believe yes yeah, yeah. so make, make sure to reach out to tony um you can you can get in touch with me me as well i don't have quite as much experience with the uh, the health and detox field, but I, I have learned a decent amount in my time um, exploring this. So I'm always happy to, to connect as well. My, my, um, uh, or just about anything I've got linked to join, uh, sign up for one-on-one -on -one in my link tree as well. So that's always available. Um, I love connecting with people. So yeah. All right. Yeah. We are, we are so blessed that we got to connect with the most beautiful people. It's like, Truly. It makes me, it actually, it makes me happy. It's part of my, yeah, me being balanced. It's, it's, it's beautiful. I'm, I'm so grateful with everything that is, um, that's going on and the people that we connect with. Beautiful. Yes, it is beautiful. So yeah. everybody, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you for, for making this so special. All right, Tony. Well, I love you and I love everyone and we will talk to you next time. Love you too. Till the next time. Bye-bye.